Hello everyone. Uh, I'm part of uh, City Commercial Cards uh, API platform team. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the journey what we have gone through in the last couple of years and specifically highlight some of the implementation uh, what we have done through the event driven architecture. Uh, these are the contents which I'm planning to cover as part of this uh, journey walkthrough. Uh, on a very high level, I'll set the business context, uh, who we are, what are the challenges we have, and what are the opportunities, and how API as a product, you know, API as a solution solves these uh, challenges. And then uh, I'll go back in time when we initially started this whole journey, uh, some of the technical challenges which we have listed down, and what are the solutions uh, for the same. And then on a very high level, I'll walk through uh, the architecture and some of the important components and how it interacts. Uh, then we'll uh, quickly recap some of the important concepts of event-driven architecture and some of the important concepts, how we have implemented it and what are the benefits of it. Then next is the simplification through abstraction. There are uh, some of the layers which we have abstracted in terms of integrating with uh, event broker and that has helped in terms of uh, a clean code. Uh, I'll walk you through some of the details on that. And the last but not the least, one of my favorite topic is the observability, how we have implemented it and uh, what are the results which we have seen out of that. Uh, I'll get into the details. Uh, on a very high level, uh, there are a lot of opportunities in the commercial card space. You know, uh, the B2B transactions are uh, uh, expected to uh, grow exponentially. And this is mainly due to the uh, transformation which are happening in the C2B2B and B2B2C segments. From a market challenges, the overall commercial cards landscape is continuing to evolve and there are uh, new solutions which are expected as part of the market and at an increased rate of change. Uh, this is where the API as a solution fits in right into the space where uh, to our commercial cards client, we will be in doing a seamless integration uh, with the financial systems and uh, provide real-time access to the products what we have. And uh, this is the last 18 months what we have gone through the journey uh, from initially executing a couple of thousands of uh, records and we have seen an exponential uh, volume increase in the last 18 months and you, you can see uh, through the graph where you know what we have been executing in terms of thousand right now our uh, scale is around 8 million plus and this will only continue to increase as we go about and uh, the next slides will cover more in terms of details and the architecture principles, what we have implemented and how we are able to reach this. Uh, here, uh, going back in time, you know, the lab before two years, what are the some of the challenges uh, which we have listed down? And so that uh, these are the challenges which we should be taking in terms of implementing the architecture. I have listed down some of the challenges and uh, I'll go through the uh, solutions on a very high level in this slide. And then the next slides will cover a fair bit of detail. On a very high level, you know, whatever the solution which we are going to implement, it should be highly scalable. And based on the product usage and the growth, what has been expected, we should be able to serve, we should be able to scale independently those services. Uh, then the next is uh, the resiliency. Uh, each of the services should be fault tolerance, uh, which means it must be capable for handling errors and then failures and things like that. And uh, there must be a greater degree of flexibility in the way we are accepting the change and the change has to go through, uh, you know, seamlessly. And the most important part from a developer point of view is the consistency of the code. If there is a greater consistency of the code in terms of the structure of the code, how it has been maintained, uh, it will help in terms of increased uh, state of uh, developer collaboration. And overall, this will all help in terms of speed to market. Again, last but not least, it's the proactive monitoring step. Once when we start breaking down into uh, microservices, it's very important for us to have uh, a detailed level of monitoring and it has to be proactive in nature be before an issue happens. We have a good sense of uh, what are the details around it. Now I'll talk through the challenges part. Uh, we have went through the challenges part. Now I'll go through the solutions aspect of it. Uh, on a high level, uh, we adopted a microservices architecture and uh, it gives you, uh, you know, independent development and you can go through the uh, deployment and the change maintenance and all those cycles. From an even to an architecture point of view, it helps you to break down, uh, you know, complex processes into multiple chain of events and then manage uh, business requirement. 
And uh, this is where uh, I touch upon a high level of how to have a structure in the code and consistency of the code. That's where the flavor microservices comes in, where we identify some of the principles for each of the microservices and allow it to scale uh, from a development point of view, handling multiple business requirement. So this way, there is a consistency in the code what we have uh, developed, and it's easy for maintenance and uh, analyzing, debugging, and the entire process what we go through it. Uh, on the edge of it is the Spring Cloud Stream. This is where the abstraction comes in when we start using event-driven architecture and when we interact with the uh, message broker, event broker. It's very important to have a layer of abstraction so that uh, some of the details and the complexity of interacting with the message broker uh, is not uh, across all over the code. This helps to do that. And last but not the least, we should have a greater degree of control on the microservices in terms of how it's performing and how it's visible. And uh, you know, it has. We need to have a greater degree of a complete view of the microservices, so it's easier to understand and easier to debug and uh, you know uh, troubleshoot in production issues. So that and also helps in proactive monitoring. This is a high-level architecture of the Commercial Cards uh, API platform. Uh, first, I'll begin with in terms of uh, explaining uh, how an API request flows in, and then uh, from left to right, and then I will kind of explain the components which are on the right side of the event broker uh, on a very high level, what its responsibility and the principles which we have decided in terms of uh, building the scalable architecture. Uh, Typically, when a request flows in, uh, you know, client server initiates an HTTP request and then uh, a gateway intercepts it and then uh, the request is forwarded uh, to the sync service. And from the sync service, uh, the interaction begins uh, with an event broker. Here, the pattern, what is being followed is a request reply. Pretty much a request is initiated to an event broker and then uh, the sync service is waiting for a response coming back. Now, on a typically in this flow, uh, when a request comes in, First, the request handler uh, intercepts the request and does the basic set of validation. And then uh, it, it provides a success or failure. And based on that, choreography picks up the request. And this is where the actual functionality uh, will get implemented. Uh, in terms of functionality getting implemented, it could be one or more atomic or one or more tech services. Those are all uh, separately composed uh, granular microservices, which will uh, work in the responsibility of integrating with the system or uh, implementing some of the core services. Uh, this is uh, atomic and uh, composed microservices. Now, from once when choreography uh, executes all the atomic in the, in the pipeline, then choreography will then uh, compose the response back to the client. This is a very simplistic view uh, of how an HTTP request gets translated into a number of events emitting to the event broker and then subscribing and then emitting back and then sending the response back to the client. From the structuring of a microservices, you can see each one of it are uh, independent microservices and uh, uh, those will be subscribe and emitting events independently and uh, it'll scale uh, in its own swim lane. This is where I wanted to uh, you know, get into the details of uh, the flavors. The flavors are uh, different, uh, uh, different possibilities uh, in terms of handling uh, the business problems, right? Uh, some of it, we call it as request handler and which has the principles associated in terms of doing the validation and the ones which are choreography, which is where we actually uh, do the functional logic implementation. And the atomic services is where it will help in terms of solving the system integration and core systems. And finally, tech services are common shared services which will help in terms of basic tech boilerplate services, uh, in terms of notification or a webhook or any other services which could be used across, um, across the platform. This set of uh, structure helps to scale uh, in its own swim lane. And the benefit of this particular structure is, you know, uh, it gives a greater uh, degree of clarity in terms of the purpose of the structure and uh, the flavor will help to highlight in terms of what is the purpose of the structure and what is the sort of technical problem uh, which it is composing. During uh, development, it helps in terms of uh, independent development uh, as we understand the requirement, it helps to uh, 
you know, help in greater degree of speed to market, developing independently and taking all the way uh, to making it production ready. From a maintenance point of view, since each of it is attributed to a specific principles, uh, from a developer point of view, it's very easy to maintain because uh, with as the name suggests, from a developer point of view, it's very uh, easy for him uh, to identify what is the responsibility and what are the principles. Behind the scenes, we have some framework which will help uh, to make sure that uh, each of the services are aligned in its principles and there are no deviation. Uh, that's the core of it. It helps from a developer maintainability and also independently develop microservices and then uh, work in terms of emitting the events and so subscribing the events. Uh, a modular, uh, scalable in its uh, flavor, uh, we can scale. Uh, that's it uh, about this. On the left side, we have the synchronous blocking and the right side is completely an asynchronous not blocking uh, that will help to uh, decide and uh, increase as, as many number of uh, events or uh, microservices depending upon the functional business requirement. Uh, a quick re recap on the uh, event-driven architecture. Uh, again, from an event-driven architecture point of view, this is a, a, a mi mindset change. Uh, this is a complete inversion of responsibility where uh, in, in an HTTP integration, uh, you have a direct complete coupling with the uh, services what you're integrating. In an event-driven architecture, you uh, subscribe to events and then emit events, right? This gives a very minimal coupling uh, in terms of integration. One of the key points which I want to highlight back in this uh, slide is here from an event-driven architecture point of view, when we implement things, you know, you have a set of microservices uh, which are time-bound and you need to respond back as part of the HTTP response. You, because it's an event driven architecture, you also have a capability uh, to do deferred execution and something which is not time critical. So this gives, um, you know, greater flexibility, whatever which is time bound, you know, you can sequence those events and then provide a response back to the client. And whatever which is not uh, time critical, you know, you can move it as part of a deferred, deferred execution all through by subscribing and emitting to the events. And here the subscription happen, can happen since we are using uh, Solace here, we can uh, do it uh, as a single level subscription or a multi-level subscription, which is highlighted at the bottom of the slide. This slide, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, what happens within the uh, microservice. Uh, here we have uh, uh, abstraction is uh, one of the core principles what we have adopted here. Uh, when we integrate with the uh, event broker, we have a uh, different event broker for uh, multiple use cases. Uh, the most important thing here is, you know, uh, some of the even broker complexities in terms of interaction should not be uh, all over the application code. Uh, there needs to be an abstraction between uh, integrating with an even broker complexity and versus the actual code, which is what is the functional code which is getting implemented. So in this case, uh, we have a Spring Boat, uh, pretty much uh, that's the uh, Microsoft application. On top of it, we had something called a uh, Spring Cloud Stream. Spring Cloud Stream helps us in terms of abstracting the complexity between the event broker. Uh, they have this concept of uh, binder, consumer, and producer. So this way, you pretty much interact with Spring Cloud Stream. Behind the scenes, uh, you can pick up the binder in terms of connecting with Solace or Kafka. Uh, we talked about it uh, in the prior slide in terms of uh, the number of flavors and how it helps us in terms of code consistency and how the uh, microservices works. This, we have some sort of a template framework where it will help us in terms of uh, identifying what that particular responsibility of a microservice is, how each microservice should uh, be working. And we have some of the framework uh, validation rules. So this will guide the developers in terms of implementing uh, whether the validation or the choreography or some of the core services which needs to implement or any tech reusable services. On top of it, this is where actually the developer spends time, which is the application code. Uh, this will help this sort of layered architecture through the abstraction. Uh, it will help the developer to focus actually on the business logic and the functional logic. Uh, this will help in terms of code maintenance and also, you know, uh, the overall speed to market where you're actually focusing only on the code and the corresponding uh, testing associated with it. Uh, yeah. Uh, we move on to the uh, observability architecture. Uh, uh, we have went through the uh, different flavors uh, in the high-level architecture slide. 
here uh, the interactions what it happens and how the overall uh, you know observability data we are collecting it. now we have the centralized event broker uh, when a request handler or a choreographer or atomic these uh, events subscribe and then publish as part of it the interactions are all happening in the event broker uh, with the help of the observability microservices, we'll uh, tune in or subscribe to those all events. Uh, we have a concept of subscribing to star, where pretty much it's subscribed to all the events and interaction which happens to the event broker. As part of the payload, uh, we collect some of the metrics, logs, and traces, uh, which are tenets of the observability framework. And uh, that will help in understanding uh, a greater detail of uh, what that microservices does uh, in terms of uh, uh, its execution time and uh, the overall resilient success, failure, and the fault tolerance details, and uh, the general logs, right? Uh, any metadata you'd like to know about how the service functions, right? It, this will be part of the payload, and observe my, microservice will just listen in to those particular metrics, logs, and traces, and then will then feed into Splunk. And once when you have all the data in the Splunk, it will give you a greater degree of control in terms of viewing the microservices. Once when we have uh, you know, a microservices architecture and an event-driven architecture, it's very important to have an observability because since uh, the interactions are all, uh, the complex set of interactions are all happening in terms of events and then subscription to the events, uh, having a greater degree of, and visibility to the service level, uh, it's very important so that you have the analytical capability to analyze how a particular microservices has performed uh, over a period of time in terms of uh, the performance improvement or degradation, or if there are any issues which are happening uh, before actually it's uh, hit at the API level. Uh, I'd like to walk through uh, some of the high level uh, benefits what we have observed by implementing the observability, right? Uh, to start with uh, the fundamentals here is, you know, you start looking at it at a service level, uh, which gives you a greater detail, which I went through in the prior slide. And once when you have it at a service level, uh, we can uh, build and analyze data uh, in terms of uh, building an early warning system where if there is a particular uh, service failure, you need to alert it. So those sort of uh, early warning capabilities can be built into it. And from a developer point of view, pinpointing an issue, once when you have a service level failure compared to an API failure is much faster. And uh, it, as I talked about in terms of infrastructure and the resiliency nature, we can do a lot of analytical insight in terms of the state of the system. And uh, last but not the least, overall, from a developer point of view, it will be, uh, be much more productive by looking at the services rather than uh, you know, spending more time in debugging what has happened uh, if there is an issue. Hey, uh, from a future plan point of view, uh, overall, uh, we are looking to scale both in terms of number of API solution and in terms of volume per request. And uh, additionally, uh, from an observability point of view, there are a lot of opportunities in terms of you know, uh, understanding more data pattern from an even broker point of view, and also from a microservices point of view, which will continue to look for opportunities and adopt to it in the near future. Thank you.